Yo, my peoples, what's up? Welcome to the One Stop Co-op Shop. Jason here, and today I have a playthrough for Solar Sphere. This one is for one or four players, competitive. In it, you are playing a spacefaring corporation. The Earth has run out of energy, so you are tasked to fly out to the sun, set up a system of photovoltaic cells so you can suck out as much energy as you can, and if you could do so better than your rivals, then you will be the winner. In terms of mechanism, this one is a dice placement, worker placement style game. You'll roll your dice every turn and manipulate them using this control board, assign them to the spaces that are surrounding the central sphere and do things like hire some crew, gather resources, build out your sphere, and also fight off some resistance fighters who are trying to keep your greedy grubby hands off of the energy of the sun. I'll be doing a full solo playthrough against this solo bot. This one promises to pack a good amount of strategic punch uh, through the dice manipulation at a low price point and a reasonable six rounds. There are a lot of little rules to keep track of. I've done the best I can to make sure that I've gotten every rule correct. If I notice some corrections, I will try to note them. But if you see that I have missed one of the corrections, then please feel free to comment. All I ask is that you please express your kindness, your appreciation for the video. I'd be more than happy to make a note of any rules corrections. This is the One Stop Co-op Shop. You're on the YouTube channel. We also have our YouTube stream channel. Please like the videos that you enjoy and subscribe to both of those channels. We have our podcast, which is weekly. We have game-centered discussions, design discussions, interviews, lots of coverage of your favorite solo and cooperative games on your favorite podcast platform. We have our Discord, which is a great community, active 24 hours a day worldwide, talking about new favorites, old classics, and everything in between. If you like what we do, please consider a contribution to our Patreon. Helps us keep the games on the table and the tech upgraded. In exchange, you'll get exclusive access to channels of Discord as well as exclusive videos only for our Patreon backers. But if you just want to join our community and it's completely free to do so, please check the link to our Discord in this video's show notes. We are the One Stop Co-op Shop, your one stop for solo and cooperative gaming goodness. So I'm going to jump directly into the playthrough. I'm going to play the entire first round, uh, go pretty slow and describe the rules as I go. Giving context to my actions, there are a lot of different ways to score points and four general places to get those valuable points. First of all, you are building, and so you will get points for building on the sphere. There is a modular system to assign those points. I'm playing with sphere goal number four. I will get a lot of points for building outside of the sphere, and not as many, but it's still worth it to build hexes inside the sphere. I will also get points for recruiting crew, for defeating the resistance ships, and finally, and most importantly, I will get points for my faction goals. So there are three factions in the game and you score based on sets. So uh, I would not be able to just rush one faction. I have to keep all three in balance and I score based on those sets. That creates a lot of variability in the game. You can't just shotgun one strat. You wanna be able to pivot, stay flexible so that you can turn around and go after the faction points that you need wherever you find them. Here is your control board. This is where a lot of the magic happens in terms of the resource management and dice manipulation. This is your reputation track, which will get you some points. Here is your morale track, which will also get you points, as well as enable you to do minor effects uh, that might help you along the way. Here are your drones. In reality, as you roll dice, what you're trying to do is you're trying to put yourself in the best position to use these drones. These are what go out on the sphere. They defeat the resistance ships and do other game effects as well. At the beginning of your turn, you are going to roll those dice and assign them to different areas. So uh, that's four, five, six right there. And you would check the morale track. If I had rolled low, then I would be able to get some morale, which is pretty cool. But rolling high is not bad either. If I had rolled doubles, then I would be able to stack the dice. And then that is how I'm able to access this bottom row of bonuses. But as it is, that is my opening layout. Your opponent is going to be re represented by this Automa deck. Uh, every card looks like this. It will tell you to gather dice from the player characters that are not in use. And just as I rolled, the bot is going to roll. You consult this bottom track and then that will govern its actions for the round. There you go. And so I rolled that four, five, six, making a total of 15. The bot rolled a total of seven. And so I would be the first player of the game. That will change as we go from round to round, six rounds total in this one. 
So before you even place your first worker, you have a ton of options to do here on this board in terms of resource management and manipulation. First things first, I could, if I wanted to, spend a drone, go from the active to the inactive area, and I can manipulate my dice. For anyone who fears that this is one of those games where you just roll and take what you get, absolutely not. There's tons of ways that you can manipulate and get things to where you want them to be. One movement would be one pip movement on the dice. I could either move that four to this three or make a stack of five if I wanted to get that morale bonus. But let's go ahead and reset that for now. I'll be happy with the four, five, and six. The other thing that I can do is manipulate my morale track. Let's say I had some morale. I could do what the game calls a kickback. So then I could sacrifice morale, kind of make the workers work harder, work harder. That will take me into negative point territory, so do that sparingly. But if you really need to do it, then it's there for you. Like for every spanner that you move back, you'll be able to do one of these three things. See, the icon is right there. You can get one, a wild resource, and put that in your uh, storage area. Six resources total fit there. I could uh, refresh two drones, or I can get a whole new drone from my reserve. As I progress reputation, my ability to get kickbacks becomes uh, that much more effective. So I kind of present a great face to the Interstellar Conference. Uh, and so they won't mind me if I overwork my workers even more. <laughs> I guess that's the goal. So uh, as I get spanners that are behind the reputation marker, I could do this effect twice. So I'm definitely going to want to get my reputation up, but that is not something I have to worry about in this first turn. In any worker placement game, one of the easiest moves to understand is place your worker and get stuff. So in this game, there are three resources. There is ore, there is gold, and there are crystals. Uh, generally, ore is used mostly for building stuff in the sphere. Gold is a mix in terms of using it in the sphere as well as recruiting your uh, crew. And crystals are mostly used to fight the resistance ships. You can only place certain dice on the different worker placement spaces. So one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm going to take this four. And normally I would be able to gather one gold and that will be my turn. However, this area says that I can forego that worker placement and place one of my drones here. That is permanent for the game. On any future turn whether it's this round or any other round, I would be able to get this bonus. So then if I did this and I just so happen to have a die that also fit here, I would gather three gold. Keep in mind, you have to be careful uh, when placing dice on spaces that already have workers on them. Even if they're your own worker, you have to spend a drone in order to do so. That's the main function of the bot in terms of the worker placement to get in your way and make you spend extra drones. So because this is the first round of the game, uh, what I'm going to do is I am going to put the satellite here uh, and leave it there, not get any resources. And then on future turns, I'll be able to cash in on a lot of gold. It is the bots go. They get one card pull. You consult the die that is operative right now. So one, two, three. Uh, that is yellow. And that means place a drone on the sphere which is this action up top, which means that if I wanted to place a die there on my turn, then I would need to pay one drone. And the bot does not put drones on there. They just go and take the action and get in my way. So then what you would do is you would have a simple priority system, a prioritizing number uh, that it rolled, a maximum point opportunity according to the sphere goal and a few other priorities. Uh, the bot got lucky, it rolled a two. There is a two on the outer edge. So it's gonna place its uh, drone here. It gets credit for these uh, faction symbols. So it's gonna have the orange and the blue faction symbol. And uh, because of the sphere goal, it's gonna score six points. Man, that bot is already cheating and getting out to an early start. And so for my next move, here's where the dice manipulation comes in. I'm going to move one of my drones from active to inactive. We're going to turn this from a five to a four. You know where I'm going. Because I have to occupy that space, I'm going to decommission or make inactive another drone. Move over here and take advantage of my improved uh, capacity to gather gold and gather three gold. All right, so the bot's second turn it is going to check that blue symbol, which is the resistance ships. So this symbol means that I, as the player, would need to put an even number of dice in order to go to this resistance ship area. The bot cheats. It could have put any dice there that they wanted. 
So the way that works is I check the difficulty of the game, which in my case is four, uh, which means that Duranda, which is the bot's name, deploys drones when visiting the resistance fleet location up to four. So the priority is that it would deploy drones up to the strength of the individual ship. So in this particular case, that is two. So then you move over to the next ship. So it is laying claim to both of these ships. So I'll show the fight phase at the end of the dice placement. Uh, the bot has made a strong play for both of these ships. This die will come into play, but for the most part, that's what the bot is going for. These two spots are about drone manipulation. They both can take any size dice, one through six. This spot, you'll be able to just fabricate two drones. And if I put a drone there, then I can fabricate a third. But I'm not going to do that right now. I'm going to go to this spot, which allows me to refresh uh, the number of drones based on the number that I put here. Uh, then six, which means I can refresh all of my inactive drones. The way that works is that I can take any number of these and place them in my active area, or I have a choice. Uh, this would allow me some bonuses. So that is what I'm going to do. Uh, I can choose to go either way. So I'm going to take three of these and put them here. So that means that I get one or uh, one point and one morale. I'll go ahead and change my position on the point track up there. Uh, and fulfilling all three of these, I get this, uh, that you see this uh, square over here. That means that I get to unlock this opaque dice and roll that for this particular round only. So it's a nice way to get some extra action economy. You give up some drones, but I think it's worth it to be able to get a little bit of extra juice. In case you're wondering, the bot deck has no way to go here. They actually have all of their drones in play, uh, like the cheaters that they are, so they don't need that space. They do go here, uh, that would entail another card flip, and then they would use their opaque dice once per game to get an extra action. Uh, hopefully they don't do that right now. Let's see what the bot does do. They are going to go to a resource base, the one that is available with a one, which would be here, which doesn't do anything because they don't gather any resources. Had they gone to an occupied space, they would discard a drone, which is really important because they score based on the drones that they have remaining in the game. So you kind of want to be able to spread out and get the bot discarding drones as much as possible. Every little bit counts. And because the deck is so small, you can calculate the odds that the bot will do certain things. But I'm okay with that. <laughs> Let's just have some fun with this playthrough. All right, so now it is the last action of the turn. Uh, let me go ahead and roll this. I should have rolled this as I acquired it, but that's okay. Y'all forgive me, right? There is a six. If I had rolled a one, I would not have been able to get any morale bonus because it is a bonus die. Uh, but let's go ahead and place that right here because I want to be able to get those drones back that I have sacrificed. Plan on sacrificing a lot of drones. So let's go ahead and set a satellite up here. Future turns, uh, I'll be able to gather three drones when I go there. That was my backup action. I had rolled even. Uh, in order to go here, I need to have rolled odd. This is the recruitment space. Uh, if I place a satellite here, then going here would get me an extra resource. This is how I hire crew. Crew come in three levels, one, two, and three. So, and this is the cost, either gold, uh, gold and wild, uh, gold and other resources. They get stronger as they go. They, you're able to tap them and execute powers once you've acquired them. They're worth points. They contribute to your faction icons. And when you gather enough, uh, say over three, which is what the board fits, uh, any ones after that, you can retire the ones that you got and get one-time benefits and keep their faction stuff. I think because I am playing a gold-centered game, uh, I might be hitting this a little bit more often in future turns. So phase one is rolling the dice, phase two is deploying, uh, phase three is dealing with these resistance ships, which I did not participate in whatsoever. So the bot is gonna get their chance to take out both of these, uh, but here is the resistance die. Ooh, so they do not beat them. There is a four, so that ship goes down there to be dealt with next round. And let's see if the bot conquers this one. No! <laughs> oh, they have some hardy resistance right there. Uh, in order to keep things flowing, the Earth Corporation uh, loans you some strength. So it is a little bit easier to take these out next turn and gives me a chance to hop in 
uh, if I want to. So then these ships are available to attack if I wanted to. Also, if the bot wants to throw more um, resources at it, uh, if they win, uh, they would get that reputation. If they lose, whoever does not participate in the battle loses one morale. So I have to think about whether I want to uh, participate in these ship battles or not. And for the second round, we get some more ships. Everything in the two-player game, which is the solo setup, is worth two, at least at the beginning. And by the way, this is the round tracker. There are enough ships in there for six rounds of combat. All right, we are now at phase four cleanup. Nobody claimed a crew member. And so uh, on a future turn or the, the next round, claiming them would get you an extra morale. If they hang around longer, then there would be two morale. If they hang around longer than that, then they would discard. Uh, just kind of a way to keep things flowing in this market. If I had crew members, then I would refresh those cards. Uh, the bot, though, will discard. Uh, lay that out over here. These three cards get shuffled back in. Uh, and I would lay out my new dice depending on this new order. Let's go ahead and give that a shuffle. The bot is ready to go. I would take back my dice uh, for both for the bot and myself, and I am ready for round two. All right, so there are more rules. There's a lot of little rules uh, in this one, but I think that is enough uh, in terms of an overview to get going. Let's take these next couple of rounds a lot faster. So then, whoa! <laughs> That's actually really good news. Uh, so that's three fours, uh, and that means that I get three morale. So let's go one, two, three. Sorry about that. Uh, and you know I'm going to be hitting that gold. That's really fantastic. Uh, and let's go ahead and roll for the bot. Five, three, two. So I got 12. And so that means that I still have action advantage. And oh, by the way, the auxiliary die goes away until I decommission more drones. So looking at what I got going on, I got five things I want to do and only three turns to which do it. That's just the way it goes. All right, so we are going to bump one die for, uh, up to a five with one movement of the drone to the inactive side. We are going to get our first recruiting done. And our opening salvo will be nice and cheap. Spend two gold to get my man over here. And we're going to use him immediately. First of all, let's go ahead and give ourselves a morale which is fantastic. Uh, this one goes down here. We're gonna tap them immediately and spend this one gold and get two crystals. That is the power right there. As a reprisal, the bot is going to go, hey, hey, look at that. They go to the uh, area of recruitment. And because I got there first, they discard one of their drones. They have 20 uh, for the game. So that is one less point they get at end game. So Dranda rolled a five or a six, which means they got to take from tier three, which is bad news for me. In addition, uh, they check their faction balance that they currently have. Uh, they have two symbols. They have these two symbols, so it doesn't. So they pick um, basically uh, the top one if it's a five, bottom one if it's a six. I really had my eye on this one. I love being able to refresh those uh, die. Uh, and then use the refreshment to go into the decommission, get those bonuses. But the bot struck first. Darn it. And so they get that into their personal score zone uh, right there. Uh, and they got, uh, let's see, what symbol did they get? They got the blue symbol. So the blue symbol progresses up one. And then this uh, silver symbol is a wild. So that would basically... Um, this is the lowest one, so like I can cash this out and move this one up one in order to complete sets. The card itself is worth three points, and they got that one morale token. So whenever they get a morale token, according to the tracker over here, they would get one point. So now they're up to ten. Man, that bot is formidable. The bot has more points coming when it comes to the resistance ships, but let's go ahead and sneak on there and see if I can get some points uh, along the way as well. Each attack requires a crystal. Uh, that's that cost right there. That's why I got that uh, crew member, which allowed me to take those two crystals. So I only have two drones. I'm going to move on here. In order to get the better reward, I would need it to have exceeded what they put on. That was never going to happen. I just want to get on there. So I get the two points and the morale. So this would be four points and two morale total, which is a decent deal. The bot would get 10 points. Four, five, four, five. Uh, ugh. <laughs> Maybe I should have played on easy for this one. 
and oh by the way the corporation die only goes up to two and you only have to match it so there's no way that the corporation would be able to roll high enough to defeat our combined forces all right so it is the bots go the bot is going to go to the gold area no i was gonna go there but i don't have any drones left well, that makes my last decision easy now, doesn't it? Uh, let's go ahead and go to my improved space and get three drones in my active area. All right, for the bots last go, they are going to go to the recycling center. So the bot goes, they have nothing to renew. Instead, what they do is they gather that particular die, uh, the opaque die. So they're gonna use that just once per game and then it's out of the game. They pull the next cart and they go there. So that they are gonna go uh, to another resource center, which is fine by me. It doesn't really matter where, but just to make it official, they're gonna go to the crystal mine. That card gets discarded. Uh, these cards will never re-enter the deck. So uh, that's only the one uh, recycle uh, in the symbol. So don't, don't worry about that one anymore. This one is going to get placed. And when I do cleanup, then they'll shuffle these three cards back in the deck and we'll get a new discard to govern their action. So it doesn't matter. I'm not even going to bother to roll. Uh, so what happens is, though, the bot wins and they get their 10 points, which I really makes me sad. Uh, <laughs> they uh, remove one from the game and they get three back. Uh, that is the discarded drones. Discard drones participating in a successful attack. So in normal mode, they would discard one drone and easily they would discard two. And the rest go back in the active pile. For me, these automatically go into my inactive pile, which I'm totally fine with. Bye bye, corporation. And then they get uh, 10 points, they get four points, and the morale, I get uh, four points and two morale. It'll turn around, it'll turn around, right? They also get the cards and they get the faction symbols. So now they have one of each symbol and three of the blue. These ships move down, they get a corporation assist, in case anybody wants to take them out. Uh, this one, oh, okay, this one uh, rewards, it's a lower point total, but they reward that wild faction symbol, so that's okay. Uh, more twos, uh, and lots of faction symbols, a orange, who knows if I'm going to go for that. Let's go ahead and turn these to two so next round uh they'll be here but then on the cleanup for the next round they are going to be uh thrown away if i they aren't claimed we got one right there uh which allows me to manipulate some dice and uh the one here is the same one that i dumped before there's no way that you're getting taken unless by the bot bring back all those dice on to round three all right we're up to round three not looking too bad for drones now uh, that is not quite as good a roll, but at least I got two fives and two morale out of that one. And let's see what the bot gets. Does it beat my 11? A 4, 8, 9, 10, 11. It's tied. So then according to the multiplayer rules, that switches. So the bot is going to have action advantage with their 4, 4, 3. All right, so the bot is going to go with their black, and that is going to be a recruit action. Recruit action goes right there. That's going to mess me up because I was hoping to go there. So they're going to take this card. Uh, that is worth two of these symbols. Uh, they get reputation and they get the morale. So they get four points total, two from morale and two from the points. And those reputation, ugh. And so I was hoping to do that with that one recruit, but it looks like I have to spend a die instead. Let's recover some dice. I'm sorry. That, I said dice. I meant drones. And by recover, let's decommission and get points and stuff. <laughs> All right, so uh, that one will get me the opaque again. So for that precious action economy, uh, going to get two morale. So I am all the way up on the spanner, which is really nice. Two points, which I will note on the track. And a precious gold, which is going to get turned right away with this by tapping my creature over here boop, into two crystals. Let's go ahead and roll that opaque die. I can place it all I want, see what I get. That is a six. Doesn't do too much for me right now, but we'll see what happens. I have a feeling I know what this is, and this is really going to cheese me off. Yep, it cheeses me off. They are going to cover my precious gold spot. <laughs> so for the strat I'm pursuing, i got to do it. Let's go ahead and move that down for one to manipulate, and then spend another one to go down here, and I get three gold. My little area here is now full. See what the bot pulls for the last area. Oh, God, they're going on the ship again. Oh, the spear again. No. 
put their die right there. Uh, and they're going to put one of their drones on something that is a three or below, uh, which is going to be right there uh, for free. Uh, they prioritize that one because that's their lowest faction. Uh, so then they get one uh, faction movement. And they those, these are corporation symbols. That's the top row of the player board. That's just two points. And then they get another six points for having a uh, faction or a sphere thing, whatever they're called, uh, on the outside. So they're all the way up to 32. Oh, my God. <laughs> and so they're done. I get two actions because I got the auxiliary die. Uh, first of all, it doesn't matter what number I put here. I get three drones. And let's go ahead and take advantage of the fact that the bot did not uh, touch these two. So I'm going to go ahead and I am going to put my four drones that I have uh, pay my two crystal. You got to pay one crystal per ship you're going to attack, which is why I got that uh, creature over there that turns my gold into crystals. So the bot needs to not roll a two <laughs> in order for me to get these, or at least uh, uh, both of them. Remember, uh, players win ties. So let's go ahead and see about this first one. One, perfect. Let's see about the second one. Zero. Perfect. All right. So now I progress two on my wild track, which is really, really nice. Uh, these get uh, put into the inactive area, which is not so nice, but at least I get these two. And also I get six points and two morale, which is going to put me up to 13. Two morale puts me close to the top and I'm going to have a lot of striking ability uh, in case I want to start using these spanners for extra stuff. So once again, a case in which you can't do everything, let's go ahead and get rid of these cards. Uh, these cards get ones and then we are going to put out right there, refresh two dice. I might go ahead as a baby version of what I was looking for. Uh, that's a one. Anytime I uh, attack, I get a crystal. So kind of feeding itself uh, here is just a straight up crystal tap and get a, uh, I'll get a, um, a gold at least. And then here, uh, every time I place a uh, sphere, then it would allow me one spanner action. Uh, just everything is good. It's just a question of what uh, combos with your strat. The game is halfway over. Man, this game is fast. Uh, so let's go ahead and, sorry about that, roll for me. Ooh, that's about the best in the world, but at least I got some morale out of that. That's what, kind of what I like about this game. One of the things is, you know, roll high, you do stuff, roll low, you do stuff as well. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. We got, that's the current layout. 2, 4, 5, 11, 6, 7, 8, 9. The black player, the bot retains action advantage. They are going to go ahead and pull. And they actually did something good. <laughs> so many of the other symbols are, um, you know, they're good for the bot, like getting the uh, resistance stuff and the recruitment. That's like big points for them. Going to the um, resource areas is just a win for me. So I have a feeling games of this are going to swing relative to how many times the bot gets this or gets the better spaces. Either way, I have zero interest in heading over there, so you enjoy that. So while the bot is not there, let's go ahead and use this one odd number and recruit a crew member. Lots of strong choices. I can actually choose one of these two uh, advanced bots. That would clean me out. Let's go ahead and take these three gold. Actually, you know what? I'll keep the ore because I can get gold a lot easier than I can get ore. I'm going to use this one. Uh, so that gets me two blue symbols, which I need, and we're going to use them right away and move those over there. Let's see what the bot does in response. Another hex. <laughs> and so this is where it's just devastating. So much bad stuff is about to happen. Uh, they go on the four because they can afford it. Uh, they do prioritize being next to themselves or next to some of, of the uh, filled in hexes. Uh, they get a point and a wild symbol. Uh, and they get one purple. So you get the one point, and then they get the six points for being on the outer edge. And they also get a morale. So that rule I haven't talked about yet. When you build, the person next to you, even if it's yourself, gains one morale, gaining a point for the bot. Ooh. All right, actions, actions. First of all, let's use two morale, or two spots back, two spanners, uh, two refresh twice so I can uh, do that twice so four total so we're going to do one and let's go ahead and get this over with why not we get one crystal 
uh, we get t three points. So there you go, up to 16, yay! And I get three morale back, very nice. And I get that precious auxiliary die, which is going to be a three, perfect. It's exactly what I wanted, I did not want to spend extra resources, so I get my three gold. And let's go ahead, let's tap this gentleman right there. We're gonna turn that one gold into two crystals. See if I can do anything constructive with all that. See what the bot does in response. They are gonna play black, another uh, placement on the sphere, terrible. Uh, but they do, because they occupy the space already, they do get rid of one of their drones. So they're down to 17. <laughs> They prioritize the number that they have. They prioritize numbers that will get them the increased goal. So while I am struggling and whittling away, they are just scoring, scoring. So uh, they are going to advance their blue, advance their red, uh, and get one point. Boom. And then they have the six. Oh. <laughs> They're about to lap me. I thought I was doing okay. Actually, that is incorrect placement. The points really don't change, uh, but instead of progressing on that red, they're going to progress on the orange. The reason being that the orange is lagging behind. So instead of shooting ahead with this red, uh, they have this orange that's going to catch up, and this will be three full sets so far. So I was thinking of building. There's no way I'm going to go over there, waste my actions. I only have to spend one in order to occupy that area, but the fact that I have to spend one annoys me. Let's go ahead and go over here uh, and get ourselves three drones, taking advantage of that. And I have those crystals. May as well use them. So let's spend two crystals out of my uh, pile over here and assign to two areas. We got one, two... So then I have six in my area. So let's go ahead and just guarantee victory uh, there. Or I could uh, kind of assign three here, two here, and I have three crystals. So I can spend the third crystal and at least begin my <laughs> the salt there. So what that does, actually, you know what? I only have three crystals. That would be nice to spend all four, but I, I couldn't do it. So what that does is it gives me the tiebreaker in case I want to focus on this. Uh, the bot could only get second place. Uh, they'd have to exceed me in order to get the better reward. Um, yeah, so I think that will be the layout. That is one, two, three, four, five, six. I can only play six total uh, drones. Actually, that's a lie. I could spend more than six if I had them, but I don't have them. That six is total of what I can deploy. So this is a guaranteed victory. I don't have to roll. This one, as long as I don't roll a two, I'm good there too. That is not a two, I promise. Uh, and that is mine. So I get one, two. These all go into the inactive area. Those five, I get four, three, seven points and two morale. I also get this symbol, which was lagging behind for me. And I get a wild symbol, which is really, really nice to beef up what I got going. So that puts me at 23. I don't feel so bad, do I? So I don't know if I showed this last time. These move down, they get the corporation. There were three, so I didn't even bother rolling. I haven't matched them yet. Uh, so they're all gonna be worth three from now on. They're all gonna give two symbols. These move up to two, and then we got a bunch of ones right there. And we get a new card, which is going to be a rock whenever I tap it, why not? All right, round five of six. Uh, we got two, three, and five, getting me another precious morale. I'm not using a lot of morale on purpose. I want those points. And we got for the bot, uh, they're going to go blue, yellow, and black. Ten versus nine, I regain action advantage. So first of all, let's tap you right away. That's a no-brainer uh, to get those back. Uh, and let's use one spanner to get one resource, but that doesn't really matter. I'm going to use the one odd dice that I have to spend all four of the resources that are sitting here and get this one. So that gets me up to almost the top, uh, functionally the top. I'll get 10 points out of that, so hoping to really hold on to that. And this guy, which is going to get me three points. Uh, so I'm going to mark that on the thing just to make me feel better. <laughs> 
That's 29 points for me. Uh, I get some faction symbols. Um, I haven't retired anything yet, but when I do retire that, I get the auxiliary die again. Might want that for the final round. The bot gets to go. They are going to recruit. They recruit with the weenie die on tier one. Oh, no. oh by the way, they went where I went, so they lose another precious drone. Uh, but they are going to uh, get the two, so they avoid this. That's nice. Uh, so that's one point for them. Uh, and one point off of here, two more points for the bot. Here I am at 29, they're at 49. We're gonna use one droid to get this to a three, uh, and that three is going to get me three gold. Let's see what they do. They are going to recruit again. They're gonna get rid of another drone. Four gives them access to tier two. They prioritize what they have the lowest of, which is this one that doesn't get them any bonus. But they do get the two points and two faction icons there. So those faction icons are going to be the one that is furthest back. So right now they're looking at four sets. And I'm looking at zero, but I'm gonna fix that uh, pretty soon. Manipulation, let's go ahead and move that. We get two of these back. Uh, we're going to tap this, which lets me turn a die into anything. Uh, so this five is going to be a random even number, which satisfies that condition so I can attack these ships. And, oh, by the way, I didn't have crystals. Let's get some crystals. <laughs> tap, remove a gold uh, for two crystals, and those two crystals are going to be spent immediately. Uh, so I have three ships to distribute, uh, and I think I'm going to... Um, I got I to gotta pick two ships, right? So... The way it works is that uh, if you lose, and I'm likely going to lose uh, in a lot of these, so uh, what's going to happen is that you lose a morale for the loss, but if you are the quote-unquote commander, uh, so the lead guy, then you get the card. So even though I don't get the points or the morale, I would get the faction icons, and I need that symbol. And taking it away from the bot is also good too. So let's go ahead and just claim uh, right there. Don't know if I'm gonna, um, hmm, let's just do that. Uh, so I've, I've already spent the two crystals and I'm gonna lay claim over here. Uh, so I get that reputation icon, which is really sweet. And should I give myself a chance uh, right there or should I go over here? You know what, let's go ahead and, hmm, just in case I wanna actually beat this one, let's set myself up there. Here, I have no chance. Uh, they're gonna affect me, but at least here the next round I might be able to land another blow So the bot might come in and they might swoop my commander, but they don't they get another recruit and spend another Drone they get one point from the morale they get two points from here and they get two blues Which might be my downfall if I cannot prevent them from getting oranges. We'll see what I can do All right, so uh, I'm going to lose uh, these two, which is fine. I knew that. Uh, so that is going to be two morale hits total for me. Uh, it's one thing I have not been doing, and I should have been doing this, the bot also loses morale. They get a point for uh, losing morale, or they get a point when they regain morale. They lose a point when they lose morale. Let's go ahead and get set up for that last round of play. Uh, we got two more ships coming out there with symbols that I like. We got two. We're going to go ahead and get rid of that guy. There's no way that you were going to get anything. Uh, so let's go ahead and reveal. These are more conversions. There's no way that's going to happen unless I want the points. Uh, we have going to there gets me a crystal. Actually, not, that's not a bad uh, deal. More conversions. And we have a... Hmm, I'm not sure what's going on. Oh, it's the same uh, character over there. I'm uh, going to get rid of you and get a... Oh not sure what that means I should have probably told that is untap a crew member all right final round fight uh, ooh not bad I think I can uh, make that work I even get a little morale for my troubles see what the bot does a bot is going to four two three nine eleven I retain my action advantage for the final time let's go ahead and get a die placed over here that allows me to recover three drones and also let's tap this uh, building my fleet for one last onslaught tap this to remove this gold and get two crystals all right i really need the bot to suck this turn let's see if you could go from suck to blow yes <laughs> no no why did you do that i was hoping to go there darn it bot 
All right, time for plan B. I had this in mind, but the bot forced my hand anyway. Let me use this one morale that I got to get a gold. Let's spend everything that I got for this character. Uh, reason being uh, is that if I place, I will get a spanner action. Don't know if I'm going to do that, uh, but I like this. I need orange, and the, the wild is nice, and I need the bot to not get these things. Uh, so what is going to happen is acquire this card and I'm going to retire this weenie uh, who has done such good work for me uh, when they retire they give me a crystal you know what I'm going to do with that crystal see what black does <laughs> Let, oh but they have a two let's see if they uh, don't do an optimal thing with this two never mind womp womp there is a two all the way down there uh, so they're going to place this they are going to get a faction symbol which actually doesn't matter uh, because they have the orange, but they are going to get four whole points plus six is ten. They're bringing them up to 64. <laughs> so I'm going to spend one morale to get another crystal. Spending all my crystals, I have no resources left, but at least I can attack two ships. So let's give myself a chance uh, right there. And let's load up here. That... Uh, I, I would lose on twos, but that's the n biggest number of points that I can get. I'll get some morale back, uh, take advantage of the symbols. It's nice symbol diversity. So sure, <laughs> do the best that I can. So as much as I want this very last card play from the bot to be a resource, it is not. Uh, counting cards, uh, they're just going to go ahead and recruit, but they do lose one droid for their troubles. And so they're going to recruit, uh, they're going to get the two points, so I gave them credit for that. Uh, but that doesn't help them, because you score based on sets. So that's not a set. <laughs> so go ahead, get as many of those as you want, bot. All right, so let's go ahead and resolve this. I lose on a two on both of those things. So that is not a two for there. And for here, that is a two. <laughs> I couldn't uh, last too long with that, but at least I got this. I got four points and a morale. And I got uh, minus one morale, so minus three morale total. I don't like that. Uh, but at least I got the one, which puts me in positive territory. So the only real hope that I had was to try to get as many sets as possible. But thanks to the bot getting a couple of silvers, they were able to make five sets. I was able to make five sets. It's 5.8, such a wash. And you see how ahead of the bot at <laughs> it is. So this was a thrashing by me. Uh, this is a known issue. Uh, I played this playthrough intentionally rules is written to show that the bot as coming out of the box is just it's too many points uh so the designer actually posted on bg uh suggestions to lower the point thresholds uh play on easy mode uh be uh have the bot not get these silvers which would have made a big difference a 10 point swing uh other tweaks like that not everyone who watches this is going to check bgg so i just went for the uh basic uh, layout over here in terms of the scoring so you know what uh, i even though uh, the point differential is what it is still a fun game i sincerely hope that i was able to give a sense for the combos and the you know using the dice and getting extra dice and all that kind of stuff so that you could figure out if this is a worthy purchase for your gaming collection this is jace with the one-stop co-op shop reminding you that we'll see you at the next stop